Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to transform polynomial functions. So the good news about transforming polynomial functions is that as you are watching this video, I'm sure at some point, either in uh, earlier in Algebra 2 or earlier in Algebra 1, you have gone over these transformations. So hopefully in Algebra 1 you started off by transforming linear functions and you learned what a translation, reflection, stretch, and shrink were. And then you transformed quadratic functions or exponentials or radicals or cubic functions, right? And they're all the same transformations. So that's the good news. Um, the, I guess there is no bad news, but the news for today in this video is that we're just going to use these transformations on polynomial functions. So the transformations that we see on the screen right now, I have gone over in a previous video, multiple videos actually, uh, but one video that has been um, a popular video on my channel is how to transform linear functions. And I'll link that in the cards right now. Um, it's a lengthy video because I go a little bit more in depth than I'm going to go in this video onto each of these transformations. Because like I said, that's kind of the first taste of transformations is when you do it with linear functions. And so that video, go and check it out if you need some more help. So let's start off at the top. It just says a horizontal translation is going to shift the graph left or right. So we're going to move our graph either to the left or to the right. And the notation that we see right here is what it's going to look like. So there's going to be um, some addition or subtraction um, happening directly with our x variable because x represents going left or right. And we use the variable h for a horizontal translation. And with horizontal, we got to be careful. It's kind of opposite of what it looks like. So if we see x minus 5, we are actually going to the right. If we see x plus 2, we are actually going to the left. And the reason for that is our initial um, notation is x minus h, right? So if h is a positive number, let's just say h is 3. Well, let's use the same number we did up here, 5. So if h is 5, we just plug 5 in right there and it looks like x minus 5, right? Well, if h is negative 2 and we plug negative 2 in for h, now we have x minus negative 2. Well, we simplify that as x plus 2. And that's why it kind of looks opposite of what we think it should look like. Um, so usually we say, oh, minus, we're going to go left, plus uh, addition, we're going to go right. But it's really the opposite with horizontal. So that's really the big thing we need to remember with horizontal translations. Vertical translation, we're going to shift the graph up or down. We use the variable k, and it is what it looks like. So plus 1, we go up. Minus 4, we go down. Reflections, we could flip the graph over the x or the y axis. So if we are making our x opposite, we will reflect over the opposite axis. So that's the, the y axis. And remember, f of x here is like the same thing as y. So if we make y opposite, we will reflect over the x axis. Then we get into stretches and shrinks. So horizontal stretch or shrink is going to um, stretch our graph away from or shrink towards the y axis. So that could be like a horizontal stretch or a horizontal shrink. And in that case, we're, there's going to be multiplication involved, and we use the variable a and we're going to be multiplying directly with our x. And just like horizontal translation was a little bit opposite of what we would think, horizontal stretch and shrink is opposite as well. If we see a two right here, um, really what it is is a shrink by a factor of one half. If we see a one half right here, really it's a stretch by a factor of two. And the reason why that's the case, once again, um, is because we are stretching or shrinking by a factor of one over a, okay? so. On our first example, 2x to the fourth power, then we would be, um, that 2 would become 1 over 2. So that's where our 1 half comes in. And so then 1 half tells us it's a shrink. Okay, if we have 1 divided by 1 half, that becomes 1 times 2, which would be 2, right? And that's why it's a stretch. Okay, vertical stretch and shrink, much like vertical translation, is what it looks like. So we still have a here, but now we are multiplying our outputs. So if I have 8x to the 4th, it is a stretch by a factor of 8. 1 4th, shrink by a factor of 1 4th, okay? All right, so let's do a couple examples. Example number 1 says we're going to describe the transformation of f of x equals x cubed represented by g of x equals x minus 3 quantity cubed minus 1 and then graph each function. So let's start off and let's identify our two transformations that have happened. So this x minus 3 in here, we are adding or subtracting. So in this case, obviously, we're subtracting. But we are subtracting directly with the x. So we know it's going to be a horizontal translation. So now we just need to know, and also we know it's three units. So now we just need to think, OK, is it right or left? Well, it says x minus 3. So remember, maybe, maybe we're thinking left, but it's opposite of what it looks like because it's horizontal. 
So we're going to translate three units to the right. Okay, And then our negative 1 right here tells us now, OK, that's subtraction again, but it's not happening directly to x. So it's a vertical translation. And vertical does look like what it's supposed to or what we think it would. So we're going to go down one unit. Okay, And so now, if we graph our parent function, not our parent function, but our original function, we'll do that in our navy color. So that's f of x equals x cubed. So we know we'd have 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. And let's do, we, would, we know 2 cubed would be 8. So we could add that up here. 2 cubed would be 8. Uh, we don't have uh, room on our, the bottom of our graph to put negative 2, negative 8. So we'll just do that for right now. Okay, so now we know if we draw our graph, kind of what the, the shape of it should look like. Okay, we're going down like that. And so now in red, we will graph our g of x function. So let's take these four points that we had, and we're going to translate them three units right and then one unit down. So one, two, three, and down one. One, two, three, down one. One, two, three, down one. And then one, two, three, and down one. So now we have our new function over here. This is our g of x function. And that's what it would look like. So we had g of x there. And we had f of x right here. There we go. All right, so that was a horizontal translation three units right, and then a vertical translation one unit down. So let's look at our last example. Um, one example here, but kind of two separate problems that we're going to do. So it says describe the transformation of f represented by g, and then graph each function. So once again, let's describe it. So we have f of x equals x to the fourth, and then it becomes g of x equals 3x to the fourth. So in this case, we see that we have our multiplication happening. Um, notice the difference here on number two. We have that multiplication 0 0.5 happening directly with x. So that's going to be horizontal, which tells us that on number one here, this is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Okay, So now we can go back and graph our f of x equals x to the fourth function. So if we had 0, 0 to the fourth is 0, 1 to the fourth is 1, negative 1 to the fourth is negative 1. And so we're thinking, oh, it looks like a parabola. Well, it kind of does, but the bottom of our parabola is a little more rounded out. It's a little more flat at the bottom, I guess you could say. And so let's make it look a little bit like this. Okay, so I'm going to kind of round out the bottom there a little bit. All right. So hopefully that does it justice. OK, so now in green, we can graph a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So our point on the origin is not going to change. But our two points at 1, 1, and negative 1, 1 should move up by a factor of 3. So instead of being 1, 1, it's going to be 1, 3, because 1 times 3 is 3. So we can move that point right there. And also negative 1, 3. Okay. So once again, we can draw our graph here, round it out a little bit at the bottom, and bring it back up. Okay, so that's what number one would look like with a vertical stretch of a factor of three. Okay, all right, so now let's look at number two. We have f of x equals x to the fifth, and we're going to g of x equals 0.5x to the fifth plus two. So right here we see a multiplication um, happening to x. So we know it's going to be horizontal. And so now we need to think, okay, is it a stretch or is it a shrink? Well, it's a fraction, so we might be thinking shrink, but remember it's horizontal, it's opposite of what it looks like. So this is actually going to be a horizontal stretch, and it's going to be by a factor of 1 over 1 half, which would be by a factor of 2. And then this plus 2 means we are going to translate up 2 units. So this would be a vertical translation, 2 units up. Okay, So let's graph our um, x to the fifth graph. So we know we would have 0, 0, and if we had 1, it would be 1, and negative 1 to the fifth would be negative 1. Okay, So we might be thinking, all right, it looks like our x cubed graph. But once again, we're going to be a little bit more um, flat here at where our three points are, are together. So I'm going to bring, bring this part up right here, let it go a little bit closer, a little bit flatter there, and then go up there. Okay, All right. So now in red, let's horizontally stretch this graph by a factor of 2. And then let's translate it up to. So horizontal stretch, we're going to stretch it out like this. So we know that the point that's on the origin is just going to stay there. 
uh, but we have our point at one, one is gonna move out by a factor of two, so that's gonna move out to one, two. And same thing for negative one, uh, negative two is gonna, or negative one, negative one is gonna move out to um, negative two, negative one. So that's just us doing the stretch, and so now we need to translate up two, so we can move our origin point up two, and then our other points up two. Okay, so now I'm gonna take away these two points over here because that's not part of my final function. That was just helping me get there. And now we can draw our new function here. So I'm gonna draw my line up. Once again, let it come be a little flat there and then go up like that. Okay, so not a perfect drawing there by any means, but hopefully it gives us an, a little bit of an idea of what it should look like. And we can see the stretch there because that middle portion is, is more elongated, it's stretched out. And then we can see the vertical translation because we move those points up too. And that's how you can transform some polynomial functions.